Hello, I'm Dr. David Anderson with the Veterinary Medical Center for Large Animals here at the University of Tennessee. And today, I'm out at one of our uh, clinical facilities talking to Dr. Brian Whitlock. Dr. Whitlock is board certified with the American College of Theragenologists, and that means he's a specialist and an expert in reproductive diseases of cattle. And so uh, today we're interested in talking a little bit about bull breeding soundness examination. So uh, Dr. Whitlock, what is a bull breeding soundness examination? Uh, that's a great question, Dr. Anderson. A bull breeding soundness evaluation is uh, testing the bull's uh, soundness of body and mind and ability to service cows. Um, it involves uh, primarily looking at the uh, bull's ability to see, his ability to walk, ambulate to go breed those cows, and then uh, the uh, health of his testicles, his penis, and his accessory sex glands internally. And last but certainly not least, his ability to make normal sperm and the shape of those sperm, if they can swim or not, they have to get to the right place. Okay, so a bull needs to be sound of body and sound of mind and have good reproductive structures to be able to uh, service cows. What's the earliest age that I can make that determination in bulls? 12 to 15 months of age is about the earliest uh, I would recommend testing bulls with a breeding sinus evaluation. Uh, if you do it earlier than that, you're going to have a lot of the bulls deferred and you have to retest them in a couple of months. Okay, and so what is it specifically that you'd be looking at in semen that you're um, evaluating to determine whether a bull is a, is a good potential breeder? So uh, there's a couple of things we look at. The size of the testicles are very important. Uh, the larger the testicle, the more likely his offspring are to go through puberty earlier. Um, the uh, size of his testicles means uh, the larger the testicles, the more spermatozoa he makes, the more cows he can service. Um, we also look again at the shape and the ability of those spermatozoa to swim. It's very important. You can't just do that by looking at the bull externally. You need to have a microscope and look yeah. at that ejaculate under the microscope. Okay, so it's important to work with a veterinarian to do that type of examination. And uh, do we have a feeling for um, how many cows a bull can service? So if, if I know that my bull uh, passes his breeding soundness examination, what, what do I expect to be able to get out of that bull from a service standpoint? So a bull that's classified as a satisfactory potential breeder about a month or two before the breeding season uh, should be able to service uh, a cow for every month of his age in a two month breeding season. For instance, a 24 month old bull should be able to service successfully 24 cows in a two month breeding season. By 36 months, most of the cattle we deal with in, this, in the southeast should be able to service as many as 50 cows in a breeding season successfully. And uh, I really uh, stress that in a narrow breeding season. Uh, so, so we're trying to keep the breeding season tight to uh, maximize the health of the calves so they're easier, to, um, easier to, to evaluate the cows during the birthing time, but also to keep tight groups of calves together to optimize our sale value for those calves. And uh, so when you're talking about bull power, the, um, the more cows we put on that bull, the less likely it is those cows are gonna get pregnant in any cycle. And so it stretches out that calving season too much? That's correct. We would like for a bull to be able to uh, uh, have a conception rate of about 66%. So if he's okay. serviced uh, all of the cows in that first ester cycle, two thirds of them should become pregnant. And progressively as the breeding season goes, Fewer and fewer cows should need to be bred, and most of your calves you want bred in the early part of the calving season. Um, so yes, you're exactly right. And so what traits would I be looking at or be thinking about for selecting a bull for breeding? Uh, probably the most important trait would be uh, birth weight. There are expected yeah. progeny difference, and you'd like a low birth weight uh, EPD for a bull. There are other qualities that the Tennessee Ag Enhancement Program encourages farmers to, to use. That's probably one of the most important ones. And just because the calves are born um, uh, relatively small and, and easy calving doesn't mean they necessarily have a low weaning weight. They can actually have a great weaning weight. So we want calves that are born easily but grow fast. And uh, that's, a, that's an important aspect of it. Is there anything else I need to be concerned about with bulls? Is there a possibility of them introducing disease into my herd? That's also very important. Yeah. Uh, again, remember the bull breeding sinus evaluation does not test for infectious diseases. There are infectious diseases out there that could affect your cow's health, reproductive health and fertility. Uh, and it's strongly recommended that you visit with your veterinarian to, uh, to address those, those uh, issues specifically. But remember, a bull breeding sinus evaluation does not detect any infectious diseases. So it's important to work with your veterinarian because you don't want to wait until calving season to find out that you had a bull that wasn't sound. So get a breeding sinus examination done. 
Um, you know, here at the University of Tennessee, we're about premium health care and premium client service. Let us know if we can help you and your veterinarian work through these processes. Really appreciate Dr. Whitlock spending some time with us today to talk about bull breeding science examination.